Hello everyone and welcome back to where we sometimes talk about thrillers on Thursdays. And now that it is July, we all know what that means. The Halloween season is here. I know last year I said August is when it begins, but each year keeps getting worse and worse. So I think each year we need to bring joy into our lives a little bit sooner. So July, I'm saying now is officially the start of the Halloween season. I'm really contemplating putting up my decorations up this week. But for today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the most disturbing books that I have ever read. And I was shocked that this is somehow not a video that I have never done after being on YouTube for nearly 10 years, talking about horror novels and thrillers. How have I never done a video like this? I'm gonna give it two quick caveats, which is first, these are not in any particular order. So it's not getting to most disturbing being number one. And number two, of course, we're all disturbed by different things. So I know, for example, when you see a lot of these lists, Nick Cutter is at the top. I've read some books by him, personally, not just what I find disturbing. And some of these books, I'm sure y'all are gonna be surprised to see on this list, but they are just ones that have really resonated and creeped me out. I would of course love to know before you even watch this video, when you think to yourself, what's the most disturbing book you've ever read, please put it down below because I'm always looking to add new books like that to my list. And as a little bit of an aside, if you're someone who's wondering, who's been watching my channel for a long time, why does my background look different? I moved and I showed my new apartment in my last video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. And of course, I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe. It really helps my channel out a lot. I'm gonna talk through about 10 books. And again, these are in no particular order. And up first, number one is Intensity by Dean Koontz. Now, if you all have been watching my channel for the past many, many years, I think I talked about this book maybe during my very first year on YouTube, it might've been. So this is a little bit of a throwback for me. But this is a book that really, really creeped out like 13, 14 year old Katie. This is about a young woman named China Shepherd who's visiting one of her friend's family. And in the middle of the night, a lot of them are killed and she goes on to the serial killer's RV to try and save her friend. And it's this nighttime saga of madness as she is on his RV without him realizing it and she seeing all the horrific things that he has done. This is one of the most entertaining horror novels that I've ever read. It moves at a breakneck speed and it's simultaneously, I think very scary and kind of almost a jump scare way if that could be in a book, but it also has a lot of gory aspects as well if that's something that freaks you out. But I also think that it's pretty well written and just really fun if you would ever call a horror novel fun. Next is The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. And I know that this is definitely more of a thriller than a horror novel. A lot of books I'm gonna be talking about today probably do more fall on that lane of thriller. But if you haven't read Karen Slaughter, I think when maybe you glance at her name, even though the last name is Slaughter, you might think that these are gonna feel a little bit more like lifetime movies just from you know the cover art and things like that. But, but a lot of her books cover very, very graphic content and get very, very detailed and disturbing. So this one is about Charlotte and Samantha Quinn who have this happy small town life, but something horrible happens to them. It takes place in present day, but 28 years in the past, something horrific happened to their family. I know I said I wouldn't compare her books to a Lifetime movie, but I would say if a Lifetime movie, one of those thriller types was well written and genuinely really, really disturbing, I would categorize her books in that category. Similar to Intensity, this moves at a very quick pace. And to be honest, this one has a lot of trigger warnings and a lot of her books do for really horrible violence against women. So just putting that up there up front, if that's something that makes you uncomfortable. I've even gotten to the point where I read one of her new books recently and it made me a little bit nauseous in the way that it didn't years ago. I don't know if it's just something to do with getting older. Maybe I'll do a whole video on it, but this one really, really disturbed me. Then we're gonna go down a very different direction for this one. And that is, we need to talk about Kevin by Lionel Shriver. I'm sure mo many of you have either seen the movie or read the book. As a side note, what is going on with Ezra Miller? Just every day, it's something new and horrible. Anyway, but this is about Eva who never wanted to be a mother and she then becomes a mother of two children, Kevin and I'm blanking on what his little sister's name is. But of course they need to talk about Kevin because something is very off about him. And if you've heard of the bad seed, he's just one of the baddest seeds you can imagine. The writing style in this book is very beautiful and haunting. And although this book is definitely not as gory as the last couple books I mentioned, I think because this one feels so painfully realistic, especially looking at the news these days, every time unfortunately you open up the news and you hear something horrible that has happened, I won't say anything specific because it will get into what happens in the books, really uncomfortable. And there, although there are moments of gore, they're done in a really subtle way, but that are just, 
very disturbing. And I'm sure if you've read the book or if you've seen the movie, because the movie's pretty faithful to the book for the most part, just so rooted in reality that it's really, really disturbing. Then is one and a couple on here, I was really struggling with whether or not to put them on here. But again, this is just what disturbed me. Next is Sadie by Courtney Summers. And this is one that, again, is not on the list at all because it's gory. This is not remotely a gory, scary book, but it really, really disturbed me. Because again, this isn't gory as scariest book. This is books that happen to disturb me most. But this is about Sadie, who grew up taking care of her little sister, Maddie, who was found dead. And the whole book is her getting in her car and going on this search to try and figure out clues and try and figure out, find the person who killed her little sister. This is one where first highly recommend listening to the audiobook for obvious reasons. It's kind of done in the format of from Sadie's point of view, but also a podcaster's point of view and the audiobook is incredibly well done. This is one where I personally cannot stop thinking about the ending. The entirety of this book is so bleak and depressing. There are so, so, so few moments of lightness and it almost reminds me a little bit of we need to talk about Kevin in that sense, where, where the entire book just felt very realistic and depressing. So again, not the scariest book on this list by any means, but really, really disturbed me. <laughs> this next book I think is, for those who have read it, probably at the top of many of our lists, and that is The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. This is told from a neighborhood boy's perspective named David and two new girls move into the neighborhood. There is Meg and her little sister, Susan, and they are both under the care of Ruth, who is David's friend's mom, I believe it is. What makes this one so disturbing besides the horrific graphic and just horrifying content is the fact that a lot of this is based on the true story, unfortunately, of Sylvia Likens. The movie with Elliot Page is also horrible and I'm gonna be not horrible, horrifying. I mean, this is one of those books where I went through a stage, and I don't mean stage in a negative way, where if you're in this stage, it's a bad thing by any means, but I went through a stage, at least for me, where I really wanted to read just the, the most disturbing books of all time. And this is one that turned my stomach so much because of the abuse that Meg suffers by Ruth and other people in the neighborhood. This is one that I will never go back and reread. I will never watch the movie. And to be honest, I don't know why past me would want to read something like this because it is, I, see, I can't even like think of words to describe it because it's just that, that awful. Not that the writing is awful, the writing's fine. Um, but yeah, I just don't know why looking back at it, I would have wanted to read this book. <laughs> Then we have a book I read a few years back and that is The Devil and Nan King by Mo Hader. This is another one where similar to Sadie, I would highly, highly recommend listening to it as an audiobook. In this case, simply because the narrator, she has a very kind of beautiful and haunting quality to her voice that fits really well with the story. But this is about a young English woman named Grey who comes to Japan looking for a rare piece of footage that is said to document a particularly monstrous episode of the 1937 Nanking Massacre. And so she's looking for this piece of a video of something that has occurred. And throughout the majority of the book until the very, very end, and I won't say what it is, you're just wondering what is this horrible thing that happened? And it's been a long time since I read this, I apologize. But I think what it is, is that she's either heard of this piece of footage and she's become kind of obsessed just with proving that it did happen and wanting to find it. I think that's what it is. But this is a really good example of how the unknown can sometimes be more scary than monsters or ghouls or, you know, in your face horror. Because this whole time you're thinking and trying to think to yourself, what could be the most horrible thing that someone could imagine that it is that she has heard about is on this tape. Then is one that I read very, very recently, and that is Layers of Fear by Junji Ito. This out of everything on the list, it definitely falls most solidly into the lane of body horror. And it's about a curse that takes over people's skin and cause them to kind of peel off, that's all I'll say, without giving anything away. And I've read a lot of Junji Ito's mangas, but this was the one that got under my skin, um, for lack of a better analogy, the most. If you've read others by him that you find more disturbing, please, please let me know. Again, not a huge amount to say on this, just but it's if you want to read some really entertaining, quick body horror, I highly recommend. This next one, I think some of you might be surprised, and maybe if you happen to open the description box and look at the list, you might be surprised and wondering, why is this on the list? But I will speak to that in a second, and that is You by Caroline Kefnes. I'm sure all of you know what You is about, whether you've read the book or seen the show. It's told from the point of view of a stalker, 
But I think what might, some people might forget, even for those of you who have read the book years and years ago, and this might be surprising for those of you to hear who have watched the show, the book has quite a few really disturbing scenes that have to do with violence or, I'm trying to think of a way to describe without giving anything away, just kind of intrusions on women and their lives. And all of those disturbing, slightly more gory scenes are pretty much cut out of the TV show. And of course, this is the first, about the first season of the show. The first season was great. As an aside, I just, <laughs> this wasn't on purpose. I'm wearing the earrings that Beck wears in the first season. I, I was obsessed with trying to find them online, but anyway. I read some discussion, I'm trying really hard to not give anything away, but I read some discussion with the director of the show who explained why they cut those scenes out because they thought, you know, we already see and hear and have a lot of real horrible things that happen to women in real life. We don't need to see it um, happen and play out on the show, which I do understand that perspective, but I also think by taking those things out of the show or at least not showing them, it made people romanticize What's his name? It made people romanticize Joe a little bit more than they should. Um, but anyway, if you've read the book, I'm sure you know what, which scenes I'm talking about, but really kind of grossed me out, even though they weren't incredibly gory, um, but again, kind of felt realistic and really got under my skin. Then we have such a fun one. I know I said intensity was fun, but I'm gonna say that this is the most fun horror novel on the list, and that is The Ruins by Scott Smith. This is about a group of friends in Mexico who I'm having a really hard time saying anything else without giving anything away, but all I'll say is this kind of is a little bit more down the lane of adventure, gory horror, where they're trapped in one location in Mexico and cannot leave and something horrible is happening to all of them at once. They're kind of one by one. This also, similar to Layers of Fear, falls down that lane of body horror. And I won't say, you can probably even tell just by the cover of looking at the book what the body horror is, but I won't give it away. But this one also really got under my skin and just felt so gross. And I can never look at the objects that this book has to do with in a different way. And I'm sure if you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about, but just really freaked me out, but was also just compulsively readable. So, so fun. And I also think the movie is not as good as the book, but I also think the movie is pretty underrated and very, very fun as well. And finally, you probably didn't expect me to end with a young adult book. And again, this is not the most disturbing one on the list. It's just a book I found really disturbing, but we're gonna surprisingly end it off with a young adult book and that is Unwind by Neil Schusterman. But as I'll explain in a moment, it's disturbing partially because it feels very relevant. But this happens after the second civil war, which was fought over reproductive rights. But the chilling resolution was that life is inviolable from the moment of conception until age 13. But then from the ages of 13 to 18, parents who maybe say the woman was pregnant and didn't wanna have a kid, she can, if she waits until the kid is 13, she can decide, you know what, yep, really didn't want kids, now I'm gonna have this kid unwound. And being unwound means that all the child's organs, the tissue, everything is sent off to different organs so that technically the life has not ended because, you know, through their organs being kept alive and other people who need them, technically they have not died. Feels very relevant, partially why it's disturbing, but also because there's a scene where it's told from a few different teenagers' perspectives, but the scene where someone does get unwound, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that, you know, someone in the book gets unwound, that's what the book's called, is not graphic, but really, really freaked me out. And I would say that maybe disturbing isn't the right word, but very, very unsettling. And hey, I'm still thinking about it seven, eight years later. So those are my most disturbing books. I will mention I've got a lot going on this summer, just fun stuff happening. So that's why I'm probably only up uploading maybe once or twice a month. But if you do wanna see more updates from me, I've been posting a lot on Instagram and Instagram stories, which I'll have linked down below. But again, please let me know, did you find these books disturbing? And if your most disturbing book of all time is not on this list, please go ahead and comment it down below. So again, hope you all are doing well and staying safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.